Welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm going to be talking with Charlie and Fiona from Octopus Electric Vehicles. We're going to be talking about BIC, salary sacrifice, and other things that Octopus Electric Vehicles do, including the 2035 BAM. So the first thing to ask you, Charlie, is about BIC. So BIC, that stands for benefit in kind. Any benefit that an employee gives you, as I know at the moment, so uh, any, anything that's sort of given to you for free, from an employer they do have to tax you on but some rules going to change on that on electric cars and i don't fully understand it myself even being in the motor trade so i was hoping that maybe you could explain that a bit better your employer provides you with something okay. that would be seen as a benefit that could be taxed okay. so for example if they give you a laptop that you use for work then that's not taxed but if they gave you a laptop that you used for Netflix or for checking Facebook, then that would be taxed. Car that you use for not only work, work but, but also for personal shops. use. Yeah. Yes. So at the moment on benefit in kind, what's are, what are EVs that you pay a total cost of what the total cost costs. So if it was a forty grand car at the moment, you pay sixteen percent. Sixteen percent. And if you had a, um, a, a if you have an EV from April onwards, what's the tax benefit on that? Zero percent. So you're going from 16 to zero percent. Yeah. So you're going from being taxed basically 16 percent of that 40 grand to zilch. Yeah. At the moment, what is a, what's the cheapest petrol car percentage? 16 percent. Okay. What well, EV is now, and is that dropping to zero? Uh, only electric vehicles. Only electric vehicles. Only electric. So all the all the petrol cars that are staying at 16 percent. What petrol car converts to 16 percent? What's the size? Right now? Yeah. Uh, it's something under 75 grams per kilometer. Okay, so we're talking one litre cars, very underpowered, stuff that people for a business car would, would not be really happy driving long mileage for, not a proper car. Uh, so that, it, it makes perfect sense for them currently to buy one, but from when it goes to 0% BIC, you'd be insane to not have an electric car. Not only have we got the 0% dropping on that, it's 0% on the total cost of the car from the start of the lease. So even what the government announced the next four or five years on BIC, uh, benefit in kind? Next three years. We only know about the next three next years. Three so years. zero, one, and then two. Yeah, so even if you're worried about year four, year five, let's be honest, the government are still going to keep that a relatively low benefit in kind tax, but regardless of that, it's still going to be cheaper than petrol. So if you're getting a company car at the moment, you're thinking get a company car, then you really, really need to look at how much money that's costing you and if your company will give you an electric car, Octopus deal with company leases, company benefit in kind. Octopus can help you out at EVs. There's a link referral code down the bottom of the video as well if you need to use Octopus referral link. There's a £50 Amazon voucher for me and uh, for you for using it. And you can spend that on whatever you want. But it's really, really important that you look at what you're costing you currently to have a company car. And if you're paying anywhere above 16%, today then an EV will, from April will be zero. Charlie the, the other thing I know you do because you're always pushing it on social media and you're always talking about it is salary sacrifice now I've never really heard about it before I've heard about some companies doing it on childcare and stuff but I've never heard anyone do salary sacrifice on cars and I know that as a dedicated EV company you're the one of the only companies that I know in the dedicated EV space that have a dedicated team just dedicated to salary sacrifice could you kind of explain to me as, a, as an employ, employer and also as an employee what it would mean. So salary sacrifice is a system by which you're allowed to buy stuff through your salary, so the business essentially, a bit like the cycle to work scheme, I don't know if you've used that, or gym memberships, or some people buy um, train tickets, so a yearly train ticket and then it takes out their salary every month. Because of the 0% benefit in kind, you can then use it to buy a car and not see a huge tax come off your car for that. Right, okay. So, uh, let, just, just trying to sum it up in my head then. So, f for salary sacrifice, first of all, I need an employee that agrees to the scheme, or can you help the employee set this up? Or So, the employer needs to set the, the scheme up, Okay. but we can help with that. We've okay. got a cheat sheet and a FAQ document, so, okay. and that allows employers to understand what the system is. It can seem really daunting, but actually it's not at all. Okay. And as an employee, you can share that with HR or finance or somebody like that. So if I, if, if I kind of understand salary sacrifice right, 
it means that the money will be coming out before I'm taxed? Yes, okay. yes. So it's, it's a company car that you pay for. Okay. But the business just doesn't give you that money. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So because the business doesn't give you that money, the tax man does not tax you on that amount. Okay. Yeah, so I, I effectively end up with a company car um, for a cheaper rate than what I, if I went direct and bought it on a PCH. Exactly. What does that mean in, in terms of figures? So in figures, you, you can save a considerable amount um, and it depends on your tax bracket, but you can save up to the amount of the, you can save up to the tax bracket that you're in off the cost of your car. So if you are paying, if you are, if you're in a 40% tax bracket, you can save up to 40%. If you're in a 20% tax bracket, you can save up to 20%. Okay. So it depends on the car, it depends on your tax bracket as well. And have you got any illustrations on these figures that we can look at? We're comparing a BMW 3 Series 330D M Sport to a Model 3 Tesla, Model 3 Standard Range Plus. Okay, and what's the list price so of those? So list price is about 41,000 for both. It's about 400 pounds more expensive for the BMW. But over the course of three years, when you total everything up, you can save close to about 8,000 pounds. Wow, isn't that including fuel savings? Yeah. What kind of mileage have you based that on? On 8,000 miles. So not, not above the national average, but not what bigger cars tend to do. So as we both know, the ban has been moved forward now to 2035. Really strong move to position us in front of other countries around the world. Um, not one country though. We're not going to mention that one because it's the best country in the world. <laughs> if anyone hasn't guessed, Charlie's Scottish. <laughs> and um, the... But I think it maybe doesn't go far enough. I think that it is, has scared quite a few people. Um, maybe some businesses or some other people into thinking that this is a lot closer. I think 20 or so years feels a long time away and as soon as you get like 15. Yeah, it's become, I mean, the important thing to note is that some of the major changes with the 2035 ban is the 2040 ban included hybrids. The 2035 ban does not include hybrids. There's also some other things to remember, which is I personally think the people buying factor will force manufacturers to get rid of petrol cars a lot quicker than that. Uh, I really do. I think when people start realizing how many charge points there are, how easy it is, how much cheaper it is, how much better it is just for local air quality, c cities like London, for example, which are really pushing hard for ultra low emission zones, I do think that people power will move beyond the ban of 2035. Yeah, and I think also that a lot of people think that that's really close, 2035, but iPhone was only, only released 13 years ago. This summer, it'll be 13 years since iPhone. And if we think how your life has changed through your office, through your home, the way you speak to Alexa or to Siri now, that has all changed in a relatively short period of time. And you've just helped make everyone who watches my videos feel really old because oh, f 13 years since the initial iPhone. Yes. Yeah, so if you feel old, leave a comment down below. Uh, thanks, Charlie. <laughs> uh, and I'll pass on all your messages to Charlie at the end uh, about how he's made us all feel like we're old people. Hey. Hi, hey, Fiona. So we've just been talking to Charlie about Bic and stuff like that and also the 2035 ban that's coming in. Yeah. But I thought I'd get you as Oxford CEO to sort of maybe explain to me what you think impact this is going to have on sales. Yeah, do you know what? I think that the demand is there already. And if the vehicles were here in, in bigger volumes, actually, I think that we'd be meeting that demand and, and they'd be flying off the shelf. So actually, I think the 2035 ban will pretty much happen as long as the manufacturers can actually continue to get vehicles here to the UK. I think actually being a bit more ambitious and getting really, really serious about some of the incentives could have a further impact, but actually I think 2035 will probably happen anyway. Now I was saying to Charlie that I think that maybe the 2035 ban will be beaten because the public's attitude will want to move faster. Yeah, yeah, I mean we see that already. So about three years ago, um, a load of drivers were asked if they were 
interested in switching to electric cars and about 25% of them thought their next car might be electric. They did the same survey last year and it was over 70%. So we've already seen a massive increase and actually we've seen ourselves over the last year that interest has grown even greater. So I think actually if they did that survey again right now, it would be over 90%. So, I mean, we see huge numbers of people really excited about it. And actually with salary sacrifice, for example, yeah. when we started talking about salary sacrifice three years ago, we'd had these conversations that would go, there's this thing, it's called salary sacrifice. You can pay for your electric car lease out of your gross salary. And people go, electric cars, are they a thing? And then you end up talking about electric cars for the next half an hour. Whereas now we've seen a shift. Now we say, oh, did you know you can pay for your electric car out of your gross salary? And people go, no way. Can I? A Tesla. I can do that with my gross salary. And people know about this now. They've seen the cars on the roads. They're seeing the charge points popping up everywhere. It's totally different. It's really surprised me. I mean, it's nice to also hear that you actually have a dedicated team that just deal with salary sacrifice here. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's becoming such a major thing for us. Um, an absolute flood of inquiries, unsurprisingly, because it is a no-brainer. Um, a couple of the big papers have helped us get the word out, which is fantastic because really just when people hear about it, they think, why would I not? I mean, people can save 40% on their monthly car lease and they can roll in you know, insurance, servicing, maintenance, all of this other kind of stuff. So yeah, and, and with, with BIT going to 0%, amazing. It, it, it's, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, that's it. I mean, it's, it's a huge game changer. And we're seeing this absolute flood. Obviously, people are really excited. What do you think is going to be one of the biggest barriers that we're going to get to this 2035 target? Do you reckon it's going to be charging infrastructure? Do you reckon it's going to be the public opinion? Which I think we both agree that public opinion is just growing and growing and growing. So I don't think that's a barrier. Yeah. Do you reckon it's going to be charging or do you reckon it's going to be physically getting manufacturers to build these cars? Yeah, well, on charging infrastructure, you know, we have 25% more places you can publicly charge your EV than we have petrol stations in the UK. And not to mention the fact that you can charge up at home, you know, or you know, even like your, your family's home if you go and visit them for the weekend or whatever. So I don't think it's, and also we've seen from Norway, charging infrastructure is not the blocker. Um, car manufacturers, that is the biggest challenge at the minute. So obviously we've seen that Tesla are leading the way, they're bringing a load of vehicles here, but actually we need to get obviously a bigger range of vehicles, but also much, much higher volume. This year in the UK, we're expecting 100,000 EVs. We sell, uh, we buy 3 million vehicles every year in the UK. So 100,000 is just a fraction. It's tiny. Tiny compared to actually the number of vehicles that we sell. And then if you look at like the broader market, let's take VW Group. VW Group are one of the traditional manufacturers that have really come out and said really bold things about their EV strategy. Fantastic. They are saying over the next 10 years, they're going to build and sell 22 million EVs. Now, in the UK, we're going to buy 30 million vehicles here. So VW Group wouldn't actually meet our demand, even if they bought all of them here and we were just buying EVs. And they've only got 15 years left. Well, yeah, so this, this is over the, the next 10 years. That, that's the kind of numbers. So let's take over the next 10 years. Actually, in, the, in Europe, we're, we're buying 16 million vehicles that's 160 million over 10 years so 22 million again from them is not going to be a lot and actually we've seen some of the other manufacturers like Toyota not even talking about EVs for Europe so actually can we meet the demand and actually I wonder if there's going to be a big shake-up in that market because maybe there are going to be like Chinese manufacturers for example that actually might be able to ramp up more quickly than some of the traditional manufacturers and which we've seen with MG yeah I mean the way they've been the way they've numbers they're meeting, they're hitting all the targets straight away. Yeah. And so, I mean, we're going to have this gap between demand and actual supply, and there's a massive amount to go at. And it's really whether or not the traditional manufacturers can get great EVs out there at, at volume to be able to really meet that demand. Great. Cheers. Thanks very much, Fiona. Cool. Very welcome. That's all I'm going to hear, and it's going to drive me insane. Try not to move too much. There we go. Welcome to today's video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> this is going to take out. <laughs>